Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to service. It's great to be gathered with you in Christ's name this day. As we gather together, we give thanks uh, for the time that we were able to be in ministry together and continue to gather and rest in this time. Uh, I give thanks to those who are joining us online and those who continue to be here gathered this morning. Uh, a couple uh, announcements for the care of the congregation. Uh, this morning, the Lions, uh, Montgomery Lions, are hosting a pancake breakfast, so if you're hungry, uh, please go take advantage of the good pancakes that are down there. So that's uh, being served until 1130. So um, just following the service, we're going to be having our um, just a little uh, first Sunday forum, just a little catch up on some of the ministry activities that are going on here at St. John. And then after that, we'll break out with our 10th graders, our 9th graders, to be able to have a time to visit and continue to talk about uh, their projects and how we continue to engage in our work and our ministry. So uh, this evening, we have our mentor dinner with our 10th graders and their mentors from last year as a way of celebrating uh, their time together. And so continue to keep them in your thoughts and prayers and also in Thanksgiving for what they have done. Uh, next uh, Sunday, uh, they're going to be doing a uh, Pastor Nick Fisher Bruin, uh, who's a retired pastor from our synod, is uh, also works for uh, is on the board for Good Earth Village, uh, and so he's going to come and talk with our congregation. He'll give the message during the service, but also then have some time with the Sunday school following the service, and with us bigger kids uh, following that down to fellowship time. So. Uh, that'll be next week. So just as a heads up, we're um, going to be having our confirmation retreat again at Gustavus Adolphus College uh, on the Sunday of October uh, 14th and 15th. And so Sunday, October 15th, we'll have Pastor Bill Nelson uh, will be in here doing public supply as uh, the 10th grader and I and the chaperones are over in St. Peter's. So. Uh, continue to be thinking that we will not be having a Saturday night service on that week. Usually when I'm away, uh, we'll just have the Sunday service. So just some of those things coming up. Uh, also, just always throwing that out that we're continuing to look for anybody who is willing to help out with uh, Sunday school teaching, uh, to be somebody who is a sub. Um, that also ties into somebody who wants to come and or sit in with the 7th and 8th grade class on Wednesday evenings, more willing to have somebody who's not a parent come and sit and to continue to learn a little bit with them as they continue to gather. So uh, just those things are coming up for the care of our congregation. Uh, we're going to have a meeting at 11 o'clock uh, with uh, some planning to do for people who are looking at possibly going to the youth gathering. Uh, that'll be in New Orleans next summer, and so that'll be starting out as far as meeting with people who are interested in that. So, I invite you now to please stand as you're able as we begin our service with the brief order of confession and forgiveness of sins, which is found on page 116. We gather this day in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sins to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, so that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us now confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a common ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now join together in singing our gathering song, which is the trumpet sound the angels sing, hymn 531. Jesus, welcome. 
with Akiri. Akiri is found on page 184. Just as a reminder, once again, we'll be singing the refrain. After the refrain, we'll break into verses where I'll be leading that, or somebody will lead that for the congregation, and then you'll come back after the verse with the refrain. And so we'll continue on. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
prayer of the day. Our prayer of the day is printed in our bulletin. Let us pray. God of love, giver of life, you know our frailties and failings. Give us your grace to overcome them. Keep us from those things that harm us, and guide us in the way of salvation. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. May be seated as we continue with our first day. with God is something to be exploited, 
but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Therefore, my beloved, just as you have always obeyed me, not only in my presence, but much more now in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who is at work in you, enabling you both to will and to work for his good pleasure. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God. I invite you to please stand as you're able as we sit together the gospel acclamation. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
question for you. Uh, one of the things is, have you ever had a time where your, maybe your mom or your dad uh, asked you to do something and you said, I'm not gonna do it. <laughs> yeah. And then a little bit later on you go, oh boy, I probably should go do it. Have you ever done that before? First you said no, and then you went and did the thing that you were asked. Have you ever done that before? Yes. Yeah. How about uh, you said, uh, first thing you said is, I'm gonna do it. And then you didn't do it. Have you ever done that before? <laughs> so this is one of those things Jesus asked this to the Pharisees and the leaders of the church because they were sitting there and they're supposed to have all the answers, right? But they didn't to some of the questions that Jesus asked. And it was just that one just kind of rolled off their tongue. Well, of course, the one who said he wasn't going to do it, but then later changed his mind, right? Because the one who said, yes, I'm going to do it, but then didn't do it, did they do any work at all? They, it was kind of one of those things where they kind of get that, that word saying, I'm going to do this, and then they kind of went, uh. So they knew. In, in fact, Jesus kind of probably chuckles to himself and says, you know this answer, but you really kind of struggle with it. You answered right off the bat. And this is one thing that God continues to remind us. Um, I, I don't know if you know this, but there was a, from that first reading that Mrs. Brenda read, that there was actually a second a section of it that was taken out of it. And that section that was taken out of it was talking about doing good or not doing good. And those times when sometimes we've done bad, um, to actually then turn around and ask for forgiveness. Have you ever done that? Yeah. I think that's one of those things. And, and one of the things that this is a word from God to the people that he says, if you do that, if you actually repent and feel sorry for what you hadn't done, that you're supposed to have done, and then say, I'm sorry, guess what God does to us? He forgives us. He forgives us. And how much does he forgive us? Does he remember a little bit of the stuff that was in the past? No, he doesn't remember that stuff anymore. He actually remembers and trusts and says, no, I can't forgive you. So this is one thing that we struggle with because sometimes we do that and then we do it over and over and over again. So one of the things that we hear, one thing that we hear is that sometimes, <laughs> sometimes we actually do that and God knows that we struggle with this. And so he did so much that he actually sent his son. Do you know what his son's name was? What's, what's God's son's name? Jesus. He sent Jesus to actually do something for us, to actually do the thing to actually, uh, when we weren't able to make that good decision of actually doing what we're supposed to have done, even though we said no, or those times when we say yes and we don't do it, God has continued to actually send his love and grace to us. Um, he also wants us to love and care for one another. So he says we aren't supposed to continue to hurt one another, but he gives us the promise that if we continue to trust in his forgiveness and then take care of one another, that God continues to promise to be there with us, to forgive us, to love us as his children. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, we give thanks to you. Continue to remind us that sometimes we have that spontaneous word of actually saying yes, but we don't come through. And those times we say no, and then we turn around and repent and ask for forgiveness and do the thing you ask. May you continue to be the God who is faithful when we are not. When we can't make the right decisions, you continue to be the God who continues to love and care for us, to bring us back into the right relationship with you, so that we continue to know that how we should care and tend and take care of one another like taking care of the neighbors and watching over one another and actually continue to have joy in doing the things that you've called us to do. May you continue to watch these two little children. We continue to watch over them and keep them. May you continue to guide them so that we can love and care for one another. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for coming up.
Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. If you, you know me by now, um, I, I kind of think at times it would be good to actually have some of those old, old, old kind of Reformation days when we actually had those services that went on for about three hours. You ready for it? A three hour service. Uh, so we actually have time, and it was kind of funny that even historically one of those things that happened even though during those three-hour services, the preacher didn't get mad if people went out and came in. Did you know that? They continue to actually gather, and it's sometimes hearing the word of God and continue understanding. Uh, one of the things for time, I think, and also sometimes for the purpose of actually not talking about something that might make us cringe just a little bit, uh, sometimes when they put together the revised common lectionary, they've taken out sections that actually, either for time or kind of, mm, that didn't want to talk about at the particular time. And that's what we found within that Ezekiel reading, because one of the things, I'm, I'm not going to read it, but I'm going to talk about it a little bit, because one of the things that we find in it is actually talking about what is going on. And why are the people thinking that God is being unfair? And how is he continuing to do with this understanding of this work of actually calling people to follow commands, the things that we should do to actually help our relationship with God and other people, and then all of a sudden we turn away from it? What do we do, and how does that do it? It also talks about generational sin and those things that continue to pull and kind of drag along with it. It clears up this, and if you need to find it, go read that center section because it says the sins of the father, sins of mother, do not drag on to the kids. Because that's not how God functions. God continues to understand if the son does not choose to do what the father does or the mother does, then that is attended and looked at as righteousness. They're not looked at as the same. One of the things that God wants us to do is not be wishy-washy, go back and forth and try figuring out how do we actually attain this on our own. Not to actually at some point in time say, I'm going to follow, and then others say, no. Uh, doesn't want to actually take the time to sit there. But one of the things that we hear within Ezekiel, we hear within Philippians, we hear within our gospel for this day, of understanding God's work and forgiving. Those who repent and turn back, and how God actually does that forgiveness. It's not our conditional forgiveness, but a forgiveness that continues to be one where he sees that sin no more. That's a little bit different than how we deal with things. But our gospel for today also ties into this understanding of authority. Now, to put our gospel into context, we're in the 21st chapter of Matthew. And if you don't realize this, this is actually a Holy Week time. This is actually after Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem, where everybody was saying, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And then you find this. Uh, you, before this, Jesus goes in and chases out all the animals and all the things, tips over the tables. And the leaders of the people come to Jesus and they have questions for him. Who is giving you this authority? By what authority are you doing these things? And that sounds like a, a question that continues to come when people are trying to figure out what's going on. Because you didn't get this authority from us, the leaders of the church. So where are you getting this from? So Jesus does a thing. He says, okay, I will answer your question if you answer my question first. I'll answer your question if you answer my question first. So does he begin with himself? He begins with John the Baptist. John the Baptist, who was out there, and we remember this, that John the Baptist was out baptizing in the Jordan River. He was actually there, and he was trying to uh, baptize for forgiveness, repentance, to actually come back to what God has been talking about, even what God is talking about in the book of Ezekiel. 
This repentance is turning back to God, and they're sitting there going, I don't know if we like this John very well, because this John called us serpents and snakes, and people who came out and were trying to flee from what wrath was to come. And so Jesus asked the question, this baptism of John, was it from heaven, or was it of man? Question that probably hit them and made them go, okay, let's take this out of the thing of trying to figure out how we're going to answer Jesus back so he answers us. So they kind of pull off to the side, and you can actually think they're having this kind of forum to try figuring out what is the right answer to give. So they say, well, if we say from heaven, well, then they're going to come, he's going to come back and say, well, why didn't you believe in John then? Why didn't you follow John? But if we believe that, say that it's from human origin, oh, we're going to upset the crowd. We're going to upset this crowd that doesn't believe in that was something that John was just doing on his own. It's going to upset the crowd that actually called him Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. They understand him as the prophet and understand him as the king. So John is out there. He's, they actually had the same attribution to John that they do to Jesus. That they understand that he is somebody who is sent with a word to tell when you're doing wrong to repent. And when you're doing right here and suffering here is what God is continuing to do. So they come back with their best answer and their best answer is, eh, we don't know. So guess what they don't get? They don't get the answer to the question. Because if they confess it is John, and John is because of their lack of fear. They, their faith that is in him and trusting that John is this one who is actually sent by God. And if they won't confess uh, who Jesus is. It isn't because of fear of the crowds, a lack of belief. It's because they struggle with the understanding that Jesus is God. That Jesus is God, along with that full authority of God's own self. That God continues to come and share in this, and that's something that they can't wrap their minds around. So Jesus then asked question number two. In a form of a parable that he is talking about, he says, what do you think? We heard what he came up with. He says, you know, the man had two sons. The one said, you know what, I'll go out into the field to work, but he didn't. And then there's the second one who said, you know, I won't do it. I will do it, but then he didn't. And so we hear this struggle between what is going on. And Jesus' words to them are words that continue to hit, and they should sting a little bit. As Jesus says, you know, you answered the first, right? Truly I tell you, the tax collectors and the prostitutes are going to go into the kingdom of God ahead of you. They're going to go ahead of you, because John came in the way of righteousness, and you didn't believe in him. This being stuck of actually... Not saying they think they're going to do the right thing, but not even doing it is one that's way beyond because they can't even believe where the authority comes from God. See, we hear and we understand that God continues to pull us into this way of actually confessing and then realizing our sinfulness. Pulling us back into that understanding of what Ezekiel was trying to, uh, was sharing from God to the people of Israel about how we should live in that relationship and how God truly forgives us as we continue to go out. See, this parable is a little confusing more than anything because actually there's three sons that we should be thinking about. The one who said, no, but he went. The one who said, yes, but did not go. Well, then we have a third, though, the one who said, yes. See, God in Christ sent his son.
to be the one who would actually not be somebody that we should be afraid of, not be somebody that we should run away from, not be somebody that we look to um, as a thing of wanting to punish us because it was because of his death that he actually suffered and went to hell. No. It is Christ who actually continues to forgive us in the midst of us being sinners. While we were yet sinners, Christ has died for us. No lip service here. As Christ became the one through whom we confess in our days. We turn to in our time of need. When we have actually turned away, we stumbled and fell yet again. We understand this work in Christ the one that continues to gather us up and say, I've forgiven you. Go now and take care of those who are around you. Go now and actually, when you see me again, you don't run and hide, but you continue to confess with your lips. You bow down in love and grace and thanksgiving, but not in fear. You turn and you continue to take care of the people who are around you because I have freed you to be in good relationships. You continue to actually not want to hurt or harm because you are set free. May you continue to hear this day that God continues to call you together, to call us together. That this is one thing where God continues to share his love for us. Second Chronicles of the Old Testament continues to talk about this. It says, my, my people who are called by my name humble themselves, and they pray, and they seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, that I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive them of all their iniquities, and I will heal their land. As Christ come, he died. He was raised again. We continue to understand this defeat of sin, death, and the grave. Let's start living that way. As we continue to understand that we hear and go and do, not because we're afraid of what the consequence is, because of this love and grace that God gives us in turn. May we hear, may we confess with our lips. May we continue to be those who bow down and give thanks for this Christ who humbled himself, died and was raised for us while we were yet sinners. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us join together in singing our hymn of this day. Our hymn of this day is Rock of Ages, Cleft.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us now continue our service with the prayers of the people. Remembering and caring the generous works of God, we pray for the church, this congregation, creation, and our neighbors. We put our trust in you as we pray for the church. Give bishops, pastors, deacons, and teachers the gift of wisdom and discernment. Be with them in bold truth and faithful witness. Lord, in your mercy. Lead us in your truth as we pray for creation. Empower us to look to the interests of others as we make choices that impact our environment. We give thanks to those who are called into the vocation of farming and gardening and ranching. Continue to be with those who tend and care as they continue to deal with this, all that you place in their hands. Continue to be with them as they bring in the harvest. Keep them and their families safe. We give thanks for the truck drivers to get the food to the stores. We give thanks for stores within our communities as they continue to provide ways for us to receive your bounty. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lead us in justice as we pray for those who are in government, the military, and other positions of authority. We lift up to you those who are serving our country, especially those from our congregation. Be with Noel Bachman, Fred Byrne, Wayne Chapman, Jack Chapman, Travis Ferguson, Cassidy Gilbertson, Ashley Noisky, Michael Schock, Alex Schock, Brad Van Hout, and Sam Westerhouse. Be with them and their families as they serve. Give them humble and willing hearts, looking to the needs of others. We pray for also for our enemies. Lord, in your mercy. Trusting in your goodness, we pray for all caregivers and people who are sick and suffering in any way. We especially lift up to you, Lois Ferguson, Don Stoffer, Lynn Denzer, Rick Hansen, Irene Oldberg, Caroline Homburg, Kathy Janowski, Kurt Peterson, Lori Helling, Peggy Zavoda, Hilary Birdsell, Doris Henderson, Judy Leonard, Lynn Pivinka, Berlin Tai, Lisa Groja, Cindy Rosinski, Joe Myers, Joyce Denzer, Pam Krieger, Eric Engstrom, Zeke Zaratka, Matthew Bowen, Harvey Chapman, Preston Pollock, Aubrey Rover, Cindy Lighthizer, Gene Wong, Milo Kaminsky, Lloyd Sabota, Evan D, Harry Nash, Ken Meyer, Diane Roanne Schultz, Tom Trenda, Amy Corpus, Yvonne Corpus, and Joy Corpus. And all of those that we lift up you now, either silently or loud. Give them encouragement and consolation in your presence. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Teach us your tasks as we pray for this congregation. Be at work in us and unite us in your love as we labor together for the sake of the gospel. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, we lift up those witnesses who shared the gospel with us through word and deed continue to be those who understood your grace and your love. May we be kept in the hope of being gathered together with Christ and all the saints around your heavenly throne. Lord, in your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Heavenly Father, we give thank you. We ask that you continue to hear these prayers that we lift up to you, knowing and trusting that you have heard them and received them on account of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. We pray in this day. Let us now receive an offering for the care and concern of the ministries of this congregation, for this community which we're a part of, the world which we have.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed our duty, our joy, and our right to give thanks and praise to God. Almighty, merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, by his glorious resurrection, open to us the way of everlasting life. And so with the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and we join her in the name.
body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and keep you in his grace. Amen. Now may God bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May he lift his favor upon you and grant you his peace. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us join the scene together. What a friend we have in Jesus. Him seven for